Hello everyone and welcome to the video. In this video here we're going to be showing you how we built Haiti in the Great, a found objects art sculpture made from various types of media. Right here I'm adding the T-bar inside the large piston so we can attach his ears and give him some sort of neck. And this would be Chris trimming the neck because I made it entirely too long and instead of looking like a uh, robotic sculpture, he looked more like a deranged giraffe. Here we're using a uh, propane oxygen torch to uh, heat up a piece of tubing to make his uh, center section, his spine. Uh, we tried to bend it around a few things and ultimately ended up using an engine block, which is gratuitous use of an engine block. But we wanted to give it a bit more of a curve uh, because of how we wanted him to stand. And this is me uh, attaching the upright tube for his neck, which I forgot to turn on the welder and blew a giant hole through it. This is the down tube that will be attached to his hips. Uh, yes, we cut this tube off. It will not be that long. Chris right here is uh, measuring out and cutting the hips. And here we are attaching to the spine, we decided uh, we wanted him to, uh, his hips to be quite a bit narrower than the shoulders uh, because of how we wanted him to stand. Chris does a really good job making sure this tube is absolutely centered and straight uh, so that everything doesn't get thrown off later on. And since I had to uh, cut off the neck a couple times, uh, this is me squaring it up to make sure that his head stays on uh, perfectly straight the way we want it. This is Chris and his son Jackson holding the shoulders up so we could figure out where we wanted to attach. And in the middle of the whole thing, we decided we wanted to add something a little bit extra. So we decided to build an RPG for his shoulder, which is made out of a, a piece of thin tubing from a bed rail, uh, a Walmart lamp, and uh, a couple lawnmower blades for the fins. You can tell it's really thin stuff because uh, I, I didn't weld a boot here. I just had to keep tacking. I really like that rocket. It looks good. Uh, here we had a, a bit of a mishap. We were getting rid of the uh, rubber bushings out of the shocks so we could obviously weld them together. You're not going to weld the rubber very well. Um, we broke about four drill bits doing this. It took a little bit of doing, but we finally got the uh, job accomplished. Uh, here we're discussing on how exactly we wanted to make the legs. Uh, we tried a few variations and ultimately landed on uh, the design that uh, became final. He's being held up right now by an engine hoist because obviously we are building his legs we don't have his feet on yet. When we do get his feet on here in just a second, um, we have him built a certain way so he'll stand a certain way once he's actually assembled. He will be standing on his own just a little bit later on from this part here, but he's not exactly balanced until towards uh, the very end. We 
We use a lot of implement parts in him, uh, including his feet and uh, up his spine. He is actually at this point standing up on his own. He's still a little bit tipsy because he's not, you know, not fully finished and he's not balanced yet, but uh, he was able to stand up on his own when we started working on him again. Here I'm attaching his, uh, his CV shaft arms, which do get welded and pinned later, so they won't just lay down like that, just won't, won't just hang there. We had to pull the boots back, weld them on the insides, and uh, pin them real good. And I'm putting his shoulder uh, protection on right now as well as his uh, blades that go up his spine. Now he's fully capable of standing on his own. We decided to give him a scorpion's tail to uh, give him something different, which is another piece of farm implementation. It's uh, one of the chains. Uh, I had to weld both sides, and it does sway a little bit, but it's good. It stands up pretty good on its own. It's going to have a little bit of sway because it's thin metal, but uh, it turned out awesome. Uh, this is uh, Chris's son, Jackson. We uh, had him come up with a design of his own. He designed the right hand for us sorry left hand he designed the left hand for us and here we are letting him do the sandblasting to clean up the parts so i can weld them together uh, this design was t entirely his uh, he did a really good job and there it is jackson's hand the one he designed. Now I'm adding some uh, uh, hood lift struts actually to the legs because the shocks uh, obviously give it a little bit of sway and I'm wanting to uh, shore him up a little bit make him uh, more rigid. And it adds aesthetically too. Uh, this hand here uh, was of my design, it's the right hand. Uh, it's gonna be his punching hand. It's made out of mostly old uh, lug nuts. I think the hand turned out fairly well. I kind of like it. Especially when I add the uh, uh, spikes to his hand just a little bit. Now, there's the spikes. Now he is he's nearing completion at least. Uh, at this point uh, we start painting him and uh, you don't see any video of the paint process or anything because well we were too busy uh, trying to do that so we didn't have time to video it at the same time plus we're moving around so much you wouldn't see much uh, here's where we added the extras we added a gas mask we added uh, the, the rubber tubing and the uh, hard uh, power supply from a computer to kind of give him that biomech feel and uh, this is the finished product. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did building it. Uh, check back because you never know what might come out next.